What's up guys, it's Zoko here and I wanted to cover some Ashes of Creation today. Like many of you, I've been following Ashes of Creation pretty closely, cautiously optimistic, try not to let myself get too caught up in the hype uh, like I did with another unnamed MMO recently. But it's getting a lot more difficult lately, so I caved and decided to make this video. Uh, it's my first one actually covering this game and so I'm going to start at the super original development stream. You know, that time of the month where the talking heads of Intrepid get together and blue ball a bunch of malnourished MMO nerds. In all seriousness though, I'm excited to see the progress this team has made, and today they did have a very massive change regarding the map, so I was pretty hyped to see that. Alright, let's do this. Okay, so to start with, they mentioned how they have added like 40 people uh, to the team this year alone, which is fairly significant number considering what they had prior. Uh, but they insist they the whole team has adjusted very well to the addition. I mean, I hope that's true. Nobody wants to be around a guy that is disrupting the office too much. But in terms of how it affects the game itself, only time will tell. Obviously, I hope that means we start getting some bigger updates each month. Honestly, though, that is just me being greedy. I'm just glad they are consistent with their communication. Now, today we did actually get a boss reveal. It's I guess it's more of a teaser, really. This will be an enemy you encounter somewhat early in the game. It's an open world Cyclops boss that carries a massive tree trunk, presumably, to crush other players with. Smash. The boss itself will traverse multiple zones along a river, and you can hear him coming from a considerable distance away, which all that sounds pretty cool, and I can actually see where that can get pretty intense itself. In probably the biggest announcement of the stream, they said that the world map will be increasing from 480 square kilometers to 1200 square kilometers. That is a massive jump. Steven actually led into this news like they were going to be making the map smaller. Uh, at least that's the way it seemed like to me. But the primary reason for the increase is to provide more space between land masses that will allow for better naval play. More trade routes, more bays and harbors. The water now in the game totals about 750 square kilometers, and the land totals around 450 square kilometers. Again, this is to separate everything out a bit more to facilitate a better naval system. Now, the servers themselves uh, they're still aiming on being about 8 to 10k population, which in my opinion is pretty damn good. Now travel times were also briefly touched on. Uh, they talked about how long it'll take whether you're on foot or mounted uh, in terms of traversing the area. If you're in a metropolis, which is like the, the biggest, the highest level city, it will take three minutes to go from end to end of the city on foot and about one and a half minutes uh, if you're mounted. Five minutes end to end of a node on foot and then three and a half uh, minutes while mounted. And then if you're at the top of a continent trying to go all the way down to the bottom, it's gonna take you 75 minutes on foot. And then if you're mounted, that's gonna be about 50. Now there has been a little bit of some changes to the to the node system, or at least some some updates. Uh, despite the map increasing in size, the node count went down from 103 uh, to 85. Steven said that during some internal testing, they felt like some of the nodes just didn't really matter that much. And while certain nodes are obviously more strategic in regards to position within the map, they wanted nodes to basically be more valuable and have more impact on the region they are a part of. They also detailed uh, the vassal system within the nodes. This is a fairly complex thing, or at I guess it at least seems complex at first glance, but I'm going to glaze over it pretty quick. Uh, basically, how many nodes you control depends on the level of your current node. So for instance, a level 7 can control two level 5 nodes, and then those level 5 nodes can control a couple nodes lower than it, and so on and so forth. And you can start to see this influence and control, and control start to branch out. Now if you're trying to combat something like this, uh, tactically something that is possible is if you're able to take over a node that is a part of a grouping like this, let's say you, you take over a level 3 node and it's got a level 1 vassal, that vassal of the one you took over is also broken away from the group that you took uh, that one node from the level 3 node. And so you can see where this might be some strategy to uh, start picking away at a, a group you're trying to attack, maybe start weakening them, take away more and more of their resources. Uh, maybe a specific node provides a certain resource that would make it harder to raid X location while taking over that node, cuts off that resource and makes it much or the where you're ultimately trying to target much more vulnerable. Again, some of this is speculation, but this is certainly the way this seems to be going. It's really exciting to see. Taxes. Everyone loves taxes. Um, 
A lot of people have voiced concerns about taxes being hoarded into a guild and basically bankrolling them. Totally understand why that's a concern, but it, this will not be the case in Ashes of Creation. Taxes are a complete uh, and total sink. They are only usable by the mayor of where they were earned. Uh, they cannot be taken out to basically into his purse or like a guild's purse. They are only usable uh, to perform upgrades in that town or do whatever goals uh, you decide to pursue. Uh, it's possible I missed this and I'm not 100% clear on this part. I'm not sure if the node's taxes are usable by its parent node, meaning you are, for instance, part of a metropolis, but you're like the smaller node, like on the outskirts. Do all the taxes like just funnel up to the city? Maybe like I'm not 100% sure how how that works yet. Yeah, to me, it seems pretty logical this will be the case. The bigger the town, the more resources it needs, right? But I'm not sure what that means for all those peasants. Stop! I'm being repressed, bloody peasant! They detailed a new system called policies. Uh, these are basically perks elected by the mayor and then voted on by the citizens. Uh, these policies can be stuff like increased gathering rates, uh, crafting speed, maybe some other crafting perks. Perks, maybe militarily, there's going to be some defense perks like more health points on doors or walls to protect against sieges. Maybe you can increase the rarity of drops in the region or the probability something rare drops. Do policies affect everyone? What if uh, some only affect citizens? Something like that could even entice people to come over uh, to be a, a citizen of your town if you have a certain perk that another one doesn't. The devs also mentioned something about uh, a happiness level. And if your happiness level is low enough, a group again not super clear on how this one's gonna work but a group can possibly impose martial law on a town and with that they can start to impose rules by force there are a lot of possibilities again with this within this system it's cool to see these new ideas start start taking form so I'm excited to see where this is gonna go Next up, we got some more information on the caravans. Uh, they talked to us about how to make uh, a caravan. This will be done at a default building called a caravansary. From here, you use your building materials to create the caravan. You will also, uh, like when you're building it, you'll have like a UI to see the different compartments available to you. When you're moving, uh, like once you launch it, we know that there is a PVP radius around the caravan as it moves. But he mentioned that there will be a radius a certain distance outside of town. And then once you're within that town's radius, you have basically entered the safe zone and the town's gonna even like take over like moving your caravan into that town's caravansary or like that region's caravansary. I mean even depending on like the upgrades of the caravansary itself, uh, the radius where you're safe at could even like extend out to better aid incoming suppliers. I'm liking the way this is set up at the moment and I, I think they're on the they're on the right track with the caravans. And what I think is the most controversial change they've done i'm not necessarily against it either but uh they have now made the open seas automatic flagging for pvp and i can i can totally see where some people will have some issue with that uh but they maintain this area is going to have some very big rewards associated with it and with that obviously comes risk they constantly talk about like the risk reward factor uh, and now that's not only going to be by monsters but also players you have to be concerned with each time you go into the ocean so personally i'm a giant fan of pvp but I'm a very, I'm very open to arguments against it, and I'm curious to see what you guys think. So agree, disagree, let me know what you think down in the comments regarding forced PvP flagging in the open ocean. So here we are again at the end of the dev stream, loins aching, starving for more content, and that damned Alpha 2 release date. If you are also starving for content, you could help me out by doing various YouTube related activities that will help you stay informed, or just use it to share your cynicism about this ambitious project in the comments below. It's all welcome, really. Regardless, I thank you for your time. Toodles.